All right, all right. Welcome everybody. It's Bam L Bampton shows that every Thursday, Thursday, a thirty, a thirty a.m. Pacific time, that I'm going to do live with you guys, and I'll create a compelling content for you guys. So every Thursday, a thirty, a thirty. Pacific time, 8.30 a.m. All right, okay. So today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the, uh, how the five steps I'm going to share with you, how you can do it and to return your opponent's smash, your opponent's smash easier. I know some of you guys, like, when you do the defense, your motion will get very stiff and the angle sometimes is kind of like awkward. So your upper body not flexible enough. So that makes you, it's hard to return the smash. I know that because when I, I remember when I was like uh, high schools, when I started to practice the defense, my upper body still get very stiff. So I know that experience. So today I'm going to share with you the five simple way that I applied it when I was high school to help me solve that problem and help me to bring my defense to the next levels. Okay, here's the things. Today I'm going to talk about the five steps, okay? The first steps, what I'm going to talk about is a position. Okay, it's a positioning, the first step. And then I will talk about the preparation. And the next step I will talk about the motion. After that, I'll talk about the power generation. You see, the power generation, a lot of people will skip these three steps and they will jump to, oh, how I can generate more power when they defense. The last step will be the follow through and the follow up. Okay, why? Why is this? Here's the things. The positioning is help you to make the angle with the shuttles that your opponent smashed to you be easier to return it. The second is your preparation. As you can see, if you have enough preparation, there's one more thing to remember for the preparation, when you do it, you can create more space to swing. I give you an example, a lot of people struggle at a blind spot here, right? Struggle at here. So, so the blind spot, let's say I'm a righty, when I hit it, if I, the preparation, I go like this. This part is hard to hit because there's no space. But what if I make a space? For me, that would be easier to do the return, right? Okay, so that's a, that's a preparation. The next is your motion. How you can speed up your motion so your opponent's smash for you would be easier to return it. And then the power generation is the four steps. The power generation will help you to create more power at the end. All right, so that's the, the today I'm going to talk about this. Let's just dive into this, all right? Okay, uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me the message and later I will have the Q&A time, then I'll answer each one of you great questions, okay? Oh, by the way, uh, for those of you who haven't who haven't booked the one-on-one -on -one call yet, make sure uh, go to trainingplan.bamptonandbeyond.com slash one-on-one. So at the moment, I will create I will create the training plan for you after you discuss with one of our best coach. All right? Okay. So today, there's one more thing. Today we talk about defense, right? I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give away. So the giveaway is no matter you do the comments below, no matter in the Facebook or YouTube, you do the comment below. I will pick the best comment and I'll give you the wall of defense programs, which is I'm to talk about the five modules that I'm talking about. I'm talking about how you set up your position and preparation and how you return in doubles defense. Also, I will give you the strategy
for how to defend when you do doubles. Also, not just on this, if you're a singles player, here's the good news. These programs also have the singles defense strategy. All right, so I'm gonna give it away. I'll pick the best comment. So comment below if you want this, all right? Right now, comment below. All right, and what you're gonna comment is what's the best, what's the biggest takeaway? What's the biggest takeaway for you? What's the biggest takeaway for you today? All right, so first things I'm going to talk about, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the position. As you can see, let's talk about doubles first. When I left it, go forward, I left it. When I move back, you can see this is a half court, right? Right now, imagine I lift straight. I lift straight to that side. The, posi the position, I won't stand at the center here. What I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand around a little bit close to the line. So it helps me to keep the straight with the shadows, help me easier to defense. Imagine this, if you stand up here, your opponent target the line to attack, then for you, that would be too far. And the straight shot is always faster than the cross. So that's a position you got to remember. Stand a little bit down to the line if, if you lift to the straight, all right? And then some people will say, what if I lift to the cross? All right, so if you lift to the cross, then when you move back, your upper body get to face the shadow like that side. And then your feet will move a little bit to the middle. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it, okay? So I, I gave her, I do the foot order for you, okay? So you kind of like, you lift it, you go back, you get the position will be here. And if you lift to the cross, you go back, you go like this, all right? So the middle shot, it's yours. This is for in doubles, for doubles, okay? And both sides is the same, okay? So that's a position, and it's very simple. You just keep the same. If you lift to the straight, when you move back, a little bit down to the line. If you lift to the cross, you move back close to the middle line, but make sure your upper body and your feet gotta face the shadows. Okay, so the cross shot you lift to there, your upper body can't stand like this and face it like that way. You gotta stand like this way. Okay, okay, so this is a position you need to remember. All right, how many of you guys, when you lift straight, then when you don't have time to move back? How many of you guys, like, comment below, let me know. All right, how many of you guys, when you lift up, you don't have time to move back. Okay, let's see here. All right, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, when you lift up, you don't have time to move back. The most important thing is your right foot. Once you land it, your feet, your right foot, can you not push back right away? So you will cause a lot of people, when they move forward, then their right foot will go like, the front foot will go like this. So the, the way will go like, to the front. That will cause you move back too late. Okay? So make sure when you do it, you move forward, you get a step, sit like this. So you can keep a gravity and push back faster okay so that's a position that's a position next things i'm going to i'm going to talk about is your preparation for the preparation a lot of people after they lift it they move back they go like this and when the shuttle is coming they go like okay make sure two things i only want to mention and you just remember two things after you lift it, when you move back, your racket always hold it up back, always hold like this, and when you move back. And then once you back to your position, remember the position? You, once you back to there, 
you gotta sit a little bit. Keep your stay lower like this. You won't straight up like this. One. So that's a preparation you guys need to remember. For the cross, you lift it. You also gotta be like this as well. Right? You can't be like lift it. You go like this. Straight up. Okay. Preparation. Rick it up right in front of you, and then stay low when you move back. Okay. So the next things is your motion. For the motion, this is a tricky part. A lot of people for the motion that when they hit, they always pull by their shoulder like this. The shoulder go like it's very stiff, right? How you can make your motion be more flexible is this. When you go back, you rake it forward, you either go like this or this. By the way, for this, if you hold like this and this, there's only two different. There's nothing wrong or right. Okay? This, for this, if you are a tall player, very tall, then you can hold a little bit lower so the angle will be easier to make you like punch back. All right? So if you're the sh more like shorter, then you can go like this a little bit, then you make it head up a little bit. So for you, it'll be easier. The angle will be much more sense, okay? Here's the things. When you go back, you rake it up either like this or like this. But your elbow always are holding up forward like this. And here's the thing. For the motion, you got to create a space. What do I mean by create a space? It's like this. You hold up, you go like this, right? For the space, you can see Here's the space. You like hold a ball. Here's the space that you can swing. You can swing, right? You can swing. You won't be like this. There's no space. Or your feet, you stand like this. If your opponent, you stand like this way. If your opponent hit to this side, there's no space. For your motion, your upper body, you gotta always create a space to swing. It will help you that your motion less stiff. That's the most important part. For the motion, if you want to be more flexible, you gotta be able to create a space. This is, I give an example right now, if the opponent hit to here, and then I want to split to your cross, you won't go like this. That will be too stiff. You got to make a space and turn it, rotate it, and hit to a cross. If you want to hit the straight at the blind spot here, right here, you won't stand like this. Like, okay, I, I do this way. You won't stand like this. Here, there's no space. But what if you go like this, and you move your hip a little bit, here's this more space for you to return it. Okay, let me show you, let me show you. Let me show you some like defense shot, like how you can create your space, so make your motion be more smoothly. All right, so here's the things. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the backhand first, right? So when you're gonna do the backhand, you're gonna plug to the cross, which you mean is like this. Okay, like, don't try to change it. So you kind of like, you got to create a space like this, right? You got to create a space like this. Okay, what if your opponent hit to, hit to your blind spot this side, the blind spot, quite, the blind spot on here is, you got to move your right foot a little bit. If you are lefty, you move your left foot, all right? So the blind spot, you kind of look like this. So it will be a little bit like, that's it. The shoulders get in the here, your elbow lift up a little bit, and last moment, you tap by your, your thumb. 
for for the back end this side, you still do the same, right? You turn a little bit. All right, let's do one more time. Let's do one more time. So kind of like a little bit like this. That's, that's how you can create a space, right? How you can create a space. So you're ready to position. When you head it, here's the tips I want to give to you. You set up the wall right in front of you. What does it mean? What is the wall? The wall that means is each one of you guys have a sweet spot. The sweet spot is the one you feel you can generate power more easily, which is you can go like this. Right? For me, the sweet spot are here, so no matter how fast or the slow shot is, I always set up the water here. I always contact the shuttle right here. This is your contact point. You not allow the shuttle to pass this line. You can't allow that. So you can make your motion be more easier to return it. So that's a motion. Right now, I'm going to move up to the power generation. A lot of people will start it here because the power generation, people will think about Oh, I need to generate more power so I can return the smash. Not like that way, okay? If you want to return the smash easier, one more thing, you gotta get the power from your opponent's smash. Again, you gotta get the power from your opponent's smash. That's why you, when you defense, you got to feel more relaxed, be more relaxed, and follow the rhythm that your opponents attack. When the shot is coming, you got to get the, try to get the power from your opponent's match. How to do that? Here's the things. What we just say, you create a space right in front of you, right? Okay, you create a space. When the shot is coming, your elbow won't pull it out first. If you do this motion first, then you generate power by yourself. Because when you see the shot, it go like this. Comment below, how many of you guys do this motion? When you do like defense, you go like this. Let's see, let's see, hey, comment below. Let me know. Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Presa, you say like your opponents continue his smash, how you can change that rhythm. You change that rhythm, that's a good question. I want to mention here, okay. So if your opponent keep attack you, how you can change your motion, like your rhythm is by changing the shot, which is sometimes you can do, in the next week, I'm going to talk about a defense strategy. So most of you guys, if you want to learn a defense strategy, I will mention this. And for that, right now, I give you a, a little bit tips for this. All right, so when you defense, if you keep driving, then your motion will be like this. That's why you can see a lot of athletes, a professional, when they hit, they will like drive, drive, or punch up. Or sometimes they will just lift both sides, right? They try to slow down the motion, but when they speed up, which is like, they start to drive and move forward, that will speed up the rhythm. So you gotta find an opportunity that if your opponents smash or attack, the quality is not that good, you can speed up the rhythm. But if your opponent keep really aggressive, you gotta try to slow down and keep up their rhythm by blocking the shots or lift up to the white, like white corner. Okay. So is that, is that all good, Prasad? All right, so here's the things. For the power generation, power generation, when you do it, elbow won't pull it up, but your motion, when you tap it forward, let's say for a drive, you tap it forward, right? Your, your form just follows through like this. And your Ricky face, your Ricky face, I would recommend you guys Tap it down a little bit down. 
All right, let me let me do it a little bit closer. So you gotta you gotta push in down a little bit. You won't go you won't do it with your wrist like too much, like this. Okay, with the more with your fingers. Finger. And when you tap it forward, your forearm follows it forward a little bit. You won't do it with your elbow forward. That's the key point. You can get more power from your opponent's smash. All right? Give me a thumbs up if you get it. Give me a thumbs up if you get it. Get This is really important. You got to get the power from your opponent's not by yourself, not by yourself. All right, okay, that's good. Oh, I see a lot of thumbs up, that's good, that's good. I like that, I like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, the next thing I'm going to talk about is your follow through motion. A lot of people talk about, oh, when I smash, I need to do the small motion, small motion, so the small motion will become like this. That's too small. You didn't follow through, so that's why your shot couldn't go forward. After you generate power, like you get a power from your opponent's smash, you get it, your forearm still need to follow through, no matter what. You do drive, block, or lift. So I give you an example. That you, do, you do drive, you need to push forward and drive forward, right? This, right? If you do lift, your forearm gotta follow through up. Like this. If you do block, same thing. You hit it, you block like this, the motion is a little bit smaller, you do it, but your forearm still, your upper body still need to go like this. So that's why you can see, let's say I do block to your cross. This will you, you, you like uh, see in a lot of uh, professional mixed doubles. You can see opponents attacks a female player when they blocked it. The first thing they they're going to do what follow up, right? But right now we talk about follow through. I'm going to talk about follow up later. Follow through, you can see because they do this, so they do this follow through, and the show go further. The key point of a block shot in doubles, make sure flatter is more important. You gotta make your shot be flat first. Instead, instead you, you wanna hit a, like very short. If you hit very short, the shot is go high in doubles. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work. All right, so you gotta make sure you follow through forward and the shot can go a little bit further but it's flat, it's flat. That's why the follow through is really important. The follow through is really important, okay? Right now, then I'm going to move up. After you do the follow through, you're going to do what? Your position gonna change somewhere, right? So you gotta follow up. That's how I give you an example. When I, if, let's say, if I lift straight, I will keep sending it here, right? But if the opponent keep attacking me, I split to the cross, I lift to the cross. I gotta follow up the shuttle say I hit. So I gotta change the position. All right, an opponent hit to me, I lift back again. I gotta keep changing the position. What if I do block straight and the straight, their spot is empty, their opponent is not there. So after I block straight, I'll move forward directly. That's how you gotta follow up. A lot of people I see in the games, many of my students, they go like this. Sometimes they bump to the cross, which is really good shots, and there's the empty spots over there. But after they blocked it, they keep standing there. So even though the, the, the shot is good, but because they don't follow up. So the opponent do the next shot back, they gotta lift again they're still in the defense position. Why you need to split a shot in defense is because you want to turn the defense to offensive. You want to turn defense to offensive. That's how you do, let's say you split a shot, you block to your empty spot. But no matter what, you split a good shot, you also need to follow up. The follow up is more important. So it can help you to turn your defense to offensive. Okay, so, 
I give you some example for the follow up step. Follow up step. Okay, so let's say if I block to the cross, my follow up step, I do the back end. My follow up step, you gotta be like this. So you go like, look. Okay, one more, you go like, get, go. Follow up, right? So you can kind of, once you follow up, you speed up your feet, then you just break it up right away. Let's say if I block, if I block, too straight. So your right foot will still go like this. If you block to your straight, then you gotta be like this. Like your, your feet, when you hit it, follow up. You gotta, you gotta have this reaction. You won't be like, you won't be like this. You won't be like this. You'll be like, and then you run forward. No, you gotta do at a, almost at the same time and go forward. Thumbs up if you know, if you have more understanding about your follow up. Thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. Okay, let's see. Let, let me review here, there's some questions about it, okay? Let's see. Oh, okay. I see here's a question. Uh, what's a, it's a pro, uh, ash with? So you say how to return the shot if the shot is right in front of the like, right in front of the face. Okay, many of my students have that that like that questions. Okay, it's like this. They go like they rack the whole hole like like this one, and the shot is the shot is right in, like in front of the face. So they always go like this. They go like this one. Okay, that's a reason. That's a reason I say if you. Move back, stay lower, you make it right in front of you like this. That shot, you can just tap it forward. So you kind of like that. Even, even let's say you hold like this. You still need to set up a wall and hit right in front. Your arm got reach forward to hit. Right? So you got to be like this. Right? Again. You still hit like this one. You, got, you, can't, not, you can't allow the shadows past the sweet spot that you set up. Okay, let's say the sweet spot is here. You gotta always hit the shadows like here. You now allow the shadows past you here. If you see the shadows, and then your motion is like, your motion is like, it's like this, that means is the shadows pass the line, and you link it, because you link your upper body part like this. Most of people have this problems is because they want to generate the power. They want generate power. Again, go back to the power generation. You need to do what? You need to, you get the power from your opponent's smash. That's the most important things. Okay. Right now, again, for some of you who just, who just gets in the, uh, right now the live stream here, here's the good news for today. I want to give away for our World of Defense programs, I will pick one person, one person who leave the best comment either on the Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. You leave the best comment, and the best comment you leave is what's the biggest takeaway from today's lessons? What's the biggest takeaway from today's lessons? I want to give away for this program for free, okay, for free. If not enough, I will spend 15 minutes to one-on-one -on -one call with you, to one-on-one -on -one -on -one call with you, all right, to teach you how to apply these programs more efficiently. Okay. So, right now, I'm going to share with you, there's a three exercise you can do to improve, to improve your defense. Okay, the first exercise, it's a wall hit. It's a wall hit. Okay, so a wall hit is like this. You gotta, you gotta hit in a wall. So you can see this is a wall, right? Okay, this is a wall. Okay. This is a wall. When you hit, you gotta try to practice the wall hit like this. Okay, that's how you can practice and to improve the defense. You can do 
you can do back then and forehand like this, right? And in the beginning of your wall hit practice, you don't generate too much power. You gotta use your power from the finger. Okay? That's how you're gonna do it. That's how you're gonna do it. Alright, so wall head is why it is so efficient in this practice is because wall head is like your opponent attack you. You don't know where's your vertical you're bouncing back. So if your upper body still keep too stiff, you will get in trouble when you do wall head. All right, practice. Okay, comment below. Today I give you an exercise. If you have time, take your rackets or tomorrow, practice wall head, 20 in the rows and five sets. 20 in the row and five sets. All right, and the next exercise I want to share with you guys is the swim motion. You can do with your heavy rackets, or with the racket cover, or with the normal racket, that's fine. And today I'm gonna to show, I just share with you the exercise. You can use those three equipment. The one simple exercise is your string figure eight. This can help you to flexible your wrist. Okay, I do, I do sideways like this, figure eight. So backhand, twist to your forehand, backhand, twist to your forehand. So you gotta stay lower. Imagine you do the defense, all right? So go like this. And the next exercise I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you is this. If you're a partner or you go to a badminton course, you can do is you let your partner to feed you. To feed you. Okay, I give. I take one of my uh, coach and come here, and I'm going to show you how you can feed each other. Okay. So you're gonna do the, You're gonna do like this. So, so, so you kind of can practice like this essentially. Yes. And don't go like this. That's how you can practice a power generation. And you can start with the throwing first. Okay? So that's a three exercise. I want you guys to try, try it today or tomorrow and practice to improve your games. All right, let's, let's take some questions here. Let's take some questions. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's see the review here. Okay. Okay, for the feet, all right, here, here's the things. For the, your preparation, your feet, you can stand either parallel like this, or your right foot, if I'm right, your right foot can stand back a little bit, but not too much, right? A little bit, so you have more space right here. But you can change all the time. Okay, let's say I give you an example. My personally, I, I like, after I hit on, on that side, after I hit it, I hit to a down line, sometimes my right foot will go right in front of me a little bit. So I have this more space on my left side of here. That's that's a fee how you can stand, but just make sure your feet keep it more flexible, don't do too steep. Okay. Okay, I pick one more question. So Facebook here. Oh, here's the thing. Uh, James talk about uh, for a grip change depending on your forehand and okay, here's the here's the things. Okay. For a defense, you can hold either backhand. And if you hold a backhand like this, most of the backhand, you can generate power 360 degree at here. So that's why you can swing like this, 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 this. Even here, you still can generate power hold, by holding the backhand. So if you always struggle with the twisting, I recommend you can hold backhand first. But when you practice, I would recommend you still practice twisting. And how to practice it? When you have time, you practice like this. Look at here. 
you do the you do the you do the back end first, right? Do the back end, and you twist through the forehand. So that's why you practice figure eight practice, right? So you go like this. The more you practice this, the fast grip twisting you will have. Because I was struggling with the grip twisting when I was very, like when I was like around junior at that moment, I always struggling. Here, I couldn't like twist to my forehand. Or if I use my forehand, I struggling with twist the backhand. Sometimes I would go like this, you know, like, like, like this because I, I don't have the time to twist it. That's why I know that's a struggling stuff. And then I create one of the things that if you get a practice, this practice is one of my coach, coach me, and then he gave me these tips. And then I started to practice every single day, 100 swing times without any break. So I keep doing it. And then it turns out the four months later, my twisting is jump up. It just improves. It just gets faster. It just gets faster. All right. Okay. So uh, here's the let's see. Okay. So again, comment below. I will pick the best comment. Comment below. I pick the best comment in Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. Is sure sure the biggest takeaway from today's lessons. And every Thursday, every Thursday, I will do the live at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. And now the next week, I'm going to talk about defense strategy. I'm going to talk about defense strategy. So invite all of your friends, to join us. And then next week, I still, I will pick one more person, one more person to give away of our wall of defense programs, wall of defense programs. Okay, so today I'll give it one person. Next week I'm gonna give one more person. All right, let's let's take one more. Let's take one more. One more questions. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. Why in preparation phase only ready with the back end grip? Why not natural or Oh, that's a good question. Okay, again, for for the back end, for your back end holding, you can generate power 600, 360 degree, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's not you can't you can't hold a natural. You can hold natural grips. You can hold natural grip. I mean, for those people who struggling with turn it in short term, if you want to fix right away, you try to use a back end. You will feel more comfortable to hit but you still need to practice how to twist your grip so you can hold natural grip. So you twist your forehand and back and faster. All right, sounds good. All right, so how much value you guys get today? Comment below, comment below. You guys learn a lot, of comment below. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, all right, so take those exercises I shared with you and start practice, start practice tomorrow, tomorrow, until next week. I wanna hear you guys' feedback, how does it work? And if you have any question, you can ask me next week. I will pick the best comment today and give away for our Wolf Defense programs. I'll see you guys, I'll see you guys next Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. All right, see you guys.